I'm lucky to be Canadian for a few reasons. We have ample amounts of beavers, and maple syrup literally grows on trees. I, well, in trees. But when has a vowel ever muttered, mattered? There's this idea that all Canadians are nice and polite, which just means you've never watched parents at a junior hockey game. But what it means also is that I've hidden behind this persona for far too long. This video is going to be political. And it's a message that I've designed specifically for my American viewers. So unless I get censored or... I get it. When we think about epic failures, we think about this. <laughs> or this. <coughs> but this time, we're getting hit in the collective nuts. The royal nuts, if you will. Except weirdly, this time, it's not so funny. That short video you just saw a few moments ago was not made by me. For one, it was much too well produced and focused to be my creation, but I agree with it. I would definitely urge you to go to battleforthenet.com. This is about net neutrality, and on that website, you'll find articles and videos that are gonna be able to explain that much better than what I can. I mean, there's a video by John Oliver, who is that adorable British man who looks like Harry Potter if he had tried to do comedy for 20 years. If net neutrality does go away, that is a big failure for true innovation and takes away the open internet that we've all enjoyed for years, decades even. Now, if there's one thing I know, it's buttered scones. But if there's two things I know, it's failure. I mean, there was a time in my life where I thought this looked cool. So I wanna talk about a failure from my past, but also a fear of failure in the future. In the summer of 2002, in between my first and second year of university, I worked at a summer camp down in Massachusetts. Camp wanted to do represent. This is, that's not the hand signal I wanted. I was totally swept up into the magic of it. I'd never gone to camp as a kid, but I loved the beauty of the camp. I was only a couple hours away from New York City. I just might see my first Broadway show. That's a story for another day. The kids who came to the camp were from very wealthy families in New York and Boston, and they would be away from their families for almost two months. So while they were there, we were essentially their family. We were there to build up their skills, as well as make them have a great time. Now, I never really had experience looking after kids. I had a younger sister, but that's vastly different than 15, 10 year olds who don't want to go to sleep. Chloroform is a great thing. I was ill suited for this job. The head counselor had to yell at me in front of the kids a few different times. I was becoming demoralized and I vividly remember walking into the woods one day and just bawling my eyes out. So, I was demoted to kitchen duty. I would wash dishes for hours a day, and I hated every second of it. But I still spoke positively about the other counselors. I made sure that the kids who saw me every day still had a good time. I still had a win-a-do attitude, not a win-a-don't attitude. I am so sorry. I flew too close to the sun and I burnt my wings. I was a failure, and it's a terrible feeling to have, an awful reality to find yourself in. And it's what I fear the most about Media Lab. I've incorporated a company that would allow video creators and podcasters a space to come in and record their creations here in Calgary. I'm currently looking for an actual space to house that in, and if everything goes well, in a couple months that will be a reality. I'm never sure if I'm on the right path, I think I have a great idea, but the market is really going to be the one who's going to decide that. I'm selling a bunch of my stuff, but I have measured a room in my parents' place just in case I need to move all my stuff back to there. And I really want to keep that gold bidet. I tried running a GoFundMe page, which did raise a couple hundred dollars, but this idea for the first year is going to be multiple thousands of dollars. So just a little bit of a mismatch there. Now there are loans and grants that I'm going to be applying for, but there's still that little voice in the back of my head that's telling me that I'm wandering in to an epically awful idea. The GoFundMe page is going to be closed in a couple of weeks, so for those of you who have donated, expect your rewards coming fairly soon by the end of the summer. 
And for those of you who need a tangible spot, that is where most of my energy is going to be focused for the next little while, finding somewhere that will house this space. Failure is awful. I've had a few, I'm sure I'll have a few more before my life is over. All I can do is plan for the best, but prepare myself for the worst. It's most likely what all my Tinder matches have to do. Here's the interesting thing about Camp Winnedoo. I actually went back the following summer as a camp counselor, but this time for the six to eight year olds, and I excelled. Sometimes all you have to do is find your niche, unless that niche is electric bagpipe music, Gerald. Or maybe a better analogy is new Coke. Nothing was wrong with the Coke recipe, and yet they still brought it out, everybody hated it, and that's why we still have Coca-Cola Classic to this day. Hey FCC, don't be new Coke. I'm lending my voice and letting you know that ending net neutrality is not just a bad idea, it is potentially a catastrophic one especially to my little corner of the internet. Remember to visit battleforthenet.com to lend your support. Thanks for watching. What failures have you learned the most from? Let me know down in the comments below. My name is Kyle. I upload videos, a few of them, each week. Keep the internet open. Where else am I going to learn new things and keep up with the news and hear shrieking goats?